Hello and welcome to Talk A Good Game as the preview of West Ham United against Sunderland. 12.45 kickoff on Saturdays and live on BT and it's a return of Sam Allardyce. But we're not going to be talking about him tonight. We at Hammerstrap have done a special show on Allardyce and it'll be up on Wednesday evening on our channel. So if you're on there, do subscribe to it and you will not miss a bit. It's well worth watching. I'm Gio from Hammerstrap. I've got Gonzo with me as well. And we've got a special guest returning, Dave, who is one day going to be the chairman of our precious football club. Hopefully, Dave. Thank you for joining us. No worries, mate. It's always a pleasure. Are you Are you looking forward to this one, Dave? Um, I'm a little bit apprehensive because it's it's just is is it's just not gonna be easy. They've beaten they drove Liverpool, beat Man United recently. They're in a good run of form. Sam's never an easy manager to beat. It's just not gonna be an easy game. But we're looking forward to it. We can beat anyone on our day. Yeah, well, that's certainly true. Gons, are you nervous for this one? No, no, I'm really looking forward to it. I've got a move the ticket for this one, so I'm right next to the away fans, so I can uh, offer them some advice throughout the game. And uh, now Allardyce want to prove um, that we were wrong to let him go, and Bilic is going to want to prove that we were right to hire him. So I think it'd be really interesting matchup tactically. Well, Dave's just touched on it, Gonzo, but I'll throw this one at you. Their last um, eight games, they've only lost three, won three, drawn two. Um, the only teams that beat them is Arsenal, Spurs and Man City. So, he's, um, as Dave said, they drew 2-2 Liverpool, two goals in the last ten minutes. They beat Man U. Are you still confident or are you thinking that maybe they're on to a good thing, Sunderland? Well, we've already shown that we're better than Arsenal and Man City this season, haven't we? So, uh, listen... Payet's back, um, and, and well, I'm firing all cylinders, new contract, and Lanzini's back, and there were times in that second half, I know it was Blackburn, but there were some really, I mean, the song was on the pitch as well, there were three players really playing some really nice little neat triangles. I think we're going to bamboozle him, but he's made a couple of good signings, Allardyce, so he, he, he may well be playing for the point, you don't know. Dave, uh, just to throw you the curveball then, uh, they've lost nine of their 13 aways so far this season, only winning two in the league away from the Stadium of Light. However, we've conceded 61% of our goals in the first half, Dave. Is that something that Bullets needs to iron out for this game? Um, to be honest, I don't think he does. Because knowing Sam, we've, we was a manager for quite a long time, he normally away games just, go, just goes for, I wouldn't say a nil-nil, but he's not the sort of manager who's going to attack you outright and try and make us concede as many goals as possible in the first half. He'll, I think Sam will try and go for a nil-nil and, and counter-attack towards the end when our players are tired. So I think particularly first-half goals won't be a massive issue for us. But I might be yeah. completely wrong, and they might go 3 nil up. So it, it all depends. Well, right now, Gonzo, they're sitting 19th on 23 points. They're only a point behind Newcastle and Norwich who both sit above them. Do you think... Do you think they're going to go down, Gons, or do you think they've got the right man in charge, the right group of players? They've got a good group of players there in parts. Do you think they've got enough to stay up? They've got they've got enough to stay up. They've probably got the right manager to stay up, and he's he's a motivated man at the moment. What is, what I'm surprised with is he's played Jermaine Defoe. I mean, you can imagine when he was at West Ham, he never would have played a guy like Jermaine Defoe. If he did, he probably would have stuck him out on the wing. So he's, he's playing with a small, diminutive striker. Do you remember when we played them earlier on in the season? Do you remember Barini was absolutely superb? And I think he's been in and out of the team. Uh, Defoe's playing well. So they've got the guy, I can't remember his name, he's taking all the set pieces now. He just signed him in the um, in the window. Oh. Uh, what, okay. What's his name? French guy. Kazir or whatever. And Kazi. Kazri. Yeah, yeah, he's 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 good. I mean, he takes a very good set piece. So they'll be dangerous in corners, as you'd expect any Allardyce team to be dangerous in corners. Can they beat relegation? I mean, it depends on those those around them. It's 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 Villa plus two others, isn't it? And 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 they're they're in the mix. Dave, do you think do you think Sunderland will stay up? Dave, put your neck on the line, or do you think bye bye time? Uh, if if anyone's gonna keep them up, it'll be Sam. Whether they will or not, it, I think it depends a lot on. Whether, it, I mean, one team normally collapses. So Villa are already in trouble, and I think it'll be either them, Norwich, or, or Newcastle who will just collapse and will finish. But, but like, like, similar to Villa, like, they'll just get no more points. Like we did when we got relegated with Avram, we got in one point from the last eight games. So I think one team every season does that, more or less. They've got some great players. I think, I think they'll stay up. I think they'll stay up. 
just about. Yeah, I think I think they'll stay up too. I think they've got the right man. I think they've recruited well in January. They bought in players that look impressive. I've never heard of them. They've got Coney at centre back who looked a weapon um, from set pieces for Sunderland against Man United and that has retaken them as well. However, we've only conceded two from corners all season under Bullets, so I don't think that's our weakness as such. Um, Gonzo, Mike Dean is the referee. Uh, you don't care about referees. John Moss, I said last week, is the worst referee in England, and I think he showed that he would part. He's not the best referee. I think Mike Dean's the second worst referee in England, and um, we've got him on Saturday. Um, however, the good news is against Sunderland in the league at home, we have won seven and lost just once um, in the last ten head-to-heads against Sunderland. Um, our team news, we've got no Sacco this weekend. It's one game too soon. Carroll might make it, Reed should make it, and Kiate has had his red card rescinded. Gonzo, how b- big a boost is having Kiate available? Yeah, big. I mean, you know, you know they're going to be physical, and our last team's going to be physical, and, and he's our athlete in the middle of the park, if you like. And Reed, if Reed possibly comes back in, or Bonner's been in, in very good form as well. I think that the key thing in previous seasons, we'd probably worry about a fixture like this, but things are changing now. We're, we're beating big teams, and we've not lost many games this season. I I do think that probably if you look at the matchups, I don't I think I think we've probably got the best central defender, the best central midfielder. The, the, I think I probably think we've got five or six players better than anything that they've got. And I think when you've got that many, if both teams put in equal amounts of effort, then then we're gonna we're gonna win out. I'm not saying it's gonna be comfortable, but uh, you know I, th- I think I think we're gonna do it. Unfortunately, though, if football isn't played on paper, it would be a hell of a lot easier if it was. Um, Dave, you're a big fan of Kiati, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and Jack think he's, we think he's a, a top, top player. No potential. Are you, are you relieved he's available for Saturday then? Yeah. He, he's our engine in midfield. He gets the ball, he runs with it, he drives on, when we're struggling, he pushes the ball out, he adds a lot of height. He's, I mean, it's not like we're short of options, we've got a lot of options, but um, he's a great player and it, it's, it's great to just have him there. So you're going to have him in there, Dave, but would you? are you hoping to see Bullock play three centre midfielders or just two and go with an extra attacking midfielder for this fixture? Um, I think it depends on whether Lanzini's fit, fully fit. If he's fit to start, I'll, I'll be tempted to say just two. I'll be tempted to say just two. But then again, uh, I think there's a lot of selection problems. Because if you look at the last ten minutes against Blackburn, when we had Lanzini, Song, Payet, they just couldn't handle us. We were just too fast, moving the ball too quickly. Do do you play Song? Do you drop Obiang's been amazing since he's come back. Do you drop Obiang? Kiate, uh, for me, he's probably probably the best midfielder at the moment because of the height he has, the strength. I I mean I wouldn't know what to do. I don't envy Village. There's just there's just too much quality at the moment. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, we're also Moses did okay at Ewood Park as well, and Antonio is going to be. Assuming going back into the winger's slot, um, so it gives Bullet a real headache. Gonzo, do you think Bullet should take Sam Byron back to right back, or do you think he should stick with Antonio after he's been impressing there? No, you know I liked Antonio there at the weekend, but but you, you play a right back there. Antonio's had a great season, so I'm I'm going with uh, it's I'm going with the two actually. Um, in, in answer to what you were asking, Dave, I'm probably going with Antonio. On one wing, and then either Payet and Lanzini in the middle, and then you know one of they probably dovetail and swap positions. Just to go back to what he said, it was really, really interesting in the Blackburn game because what you actually, how many times over the years West Ham have had one intelligent player, a really intelligent player, and he'll play a pass or make a run. You think, oh my goodness, no one's on his wavelength. I can see what he wanted to do, but no one else could read it. That little period that they spoke about, Lanzini, Payet, and Song, you actually had three in three technical players who were in full control of football who were all on each other's wavelength. And I found that very exciting. Not seen that for a long time at West Ham. Gonzo, do you worry, though, that Sam Aldis is going to turn up with some sort of battering ram in the centre of the park and absolutely smash into our technical players? I told you that. I told you that when we did the preview for the Blackburn game. You asked if Lanzini should play. I said he should play, so you need to toughen up because they are going to try and do a hatchet job. And I don't know what the situation is with Katsumol because he's the pantomime villain, isn't he, traditionally? I don't know if he's he's probably banned. He's always banned, isn't he? Um, so I, I, I don't know. But, yeah, I, I certainly do think that they're going to have some big old lumps and that's why we need our enforcer, Kiati, there to, to give him a kickback, really. 
Well, it's almost prediction time and for you to put your head on the line. One stat that, in, that I like, though, is Bullet has won 38% of his Premier League games as West Ham manager, which is the highest West Ham manager has ever done in the Premier League. Um, if he can sustain this over the, the whole season, he will be the most successful Premier League manager in terms of win ratio. It's well played to Bullet. If you're wondering, Sam Adlice was 31% at his best for, for West Ham United. Dave, you sounded confident. Give us your score prediction. Are you really confident? Um, I think this is the sort of game where you can't predict, to be honest. I'm normally not very sick. I don't never sit on the fence. But uh, I, I think either... I think Sam will love to get one over us. Maybe 1-0 maybe Sunderland, which I, I shouldn't be saying. Or maybe 3-4-0 like us. Because I think if, if we turn up, and when we do turn up, there is no stopping us. And we've seen that against Blackburn. Every, a lot of games recently, even the last 10 minutes against Norwich, no team could have got near us. We were creating loads of chances, we are moving quickly, we got fluidity. Um, so yeah, either 1-0 Sunderland or 3-0 West Ham. Um, yeah. That's a for me. Well, we appreciate your honesty. Don't worry about uh, predicting a loss. I've done it before in the past and got some stick. Turned out I was correct, though, when I said we'd get beat by Southampton, despite everybody saying I was wrong to be predicting a defeat. <laughs> Who was right? Uh, Dave, before, before we disappear and get mine and Gonzo's prediction, what do you make of Um I think at the minute he's slightly off match, match fitness and the, the sharpness you need. But then again, he's shown his quality. Because the, the game against Norwich, he, he missed an easy chance. And against Southampton, he hit headed one wide. But it's not easy playing in Dubai, a, a league where it's not as such a high standard. There's there's a lot of... It's not it's not the same standard as England. So moving from there to England, it's it, is a, it takes time to adjust. And to adjust to time of England. I think he's a great player. And he and his agent think that he's a, a top, top quality player. And there's no there's no doubt on his ability. It's just a matter of how long he'll take to get into into fifth gear. But there's definitely something there. He's always on the end of everything, and j half of the thing is getting there. If you're on the end of the chances, it's not easy. You've only got you've only got to ask Kevin Phillips. The half of it is getting there, and the rest of it's just putting the ball in the net. And I'm sure he'll get a lot of goals for us. Um, I think that's a very valid point. I, I agree. That's the hardest thing with a striker, getting in the right position. What I have to do is watch Ben Teke against Liverpool against us. How often was he in the wrong position when the ball was getting swung across the six yard and he's on the edge of the 18 yarder wondering why the ball is not landing at his feet? Gonzo, um, give us your prediction. But also, would you have MNEK or Defoe up front on Saturday? I, I, given the choice. I'd, I'd, I'd have Defoe because he's a proven Premier League striker, and Emenike is not a proven Premier League striker yet. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't think that's that's even beyond doubt. But you know what? We don't have Defoe. He left. <laughs> not I'm bitter or anything. Um, in terms of the result, make no mistake about it. There's a lot of a lot of there's gonna be a lot of talk about it being Allardyce's having a point to prove, okay? And it is going to be about that. But don't forget, it's a point to prove for Bilic as well. It's just, it's going to be the, the big Sam show, but Bilic is going to want to prove as well. So it, it's, I, 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 I do think, I think we're going to get fired up. I don't think we're going to have a slow first half like we have been recently. I think we're going to come in out and I, and I do actually predict a 2-0 win for us. Well, I'm going to go in the middle of you both. I, I think it's going to be a hard game. Unfortunately, I think we've been starting too slow in some games, and I think Sunderland have been starting really well. The very limited I've seen them this season with Aldice in charge, they've started really quickly, and I just think that they've got that kind of nitty grittiness that we haven't really come up against yet this season. I don't think. I don't think there's a team like Sam Aldice Sunderland in this league. Um, I think it's unique, which is not a bad thing. And I'm going to go for two-two. And uh, before we go, I'm going to say Gonzo, if we draw, is it a point gained or two dropped? Two draw, I, 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 neither, and I'm not sitting on the fence. You know, for me, it's all about the cup. I don't care if we're finishing eighth, ninth, tenth. I, I, I don't care. We're not getting relegated. I don't think we're finishing top four either. It's all about the cup. But I, I, I think for pride, I think his pride is at stake for both managers. West Ham fan, last few games for bowling. Let's win. Let's do it for Slaven. Prove the owners right for, you know, for making that great decision, and which I think was the right decision. So, you know, I don't, I, you know, maybe two points lost. Dave, point gained or two dropped? Give, given the way we're playing, every point dropped is a point dropped. Whether it's against Man City, Arsenal, I don't care. On our day, we can beat anyone. 
So we're viewing every single point we drop as a point dropped. Whether it's against Norwich or Man City, a point drops a point drop for us at the moment. It's not a point gained. You can tell Dave Sullivan is your dad. <laughs> that sounds that sound like an answer from your dad's mouth. <laughs> I like that answer. But anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching us. Make sure you subscribe to Hammer Chat. For our latest team news, we have recorded this on Tuesday night, so all the latest team news will be on clarityhugh.info. If you want to chat with your fellow West Ham fans, come on to the 100% free forum at hammerschat.boards.net. I've been Gio, that's been my regular sidekick, Gonzo. But Dave, thank you very much for joining us again. No worries, mate. Thank you for having me. Uh, we will see you Saturday, and hopefully three points for West Ham and none for Sam Allardyce. Thank you for watching.